We're here, we're going to start. Are you excited? Because I'm tired. <laughs> okay. <sighs> here we go. My voice is really um, scratchy today, so I'm sorry about that. Um, anyways, uh, today we are reading Our Destiny, Himiko Toga, ex listener, written by my best friend Alana. So please give her kudos in the comments. Um, chap this is chapter three, uh, called The Change in Plans and the New Plan. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So, for the next three weeks, you train with Dobby and the others. You were training in the forest and you accidentally lost control of your quirk and had frozen all of the trees that you could see. You found out that anything you touch with your hands or feet freeze instantly, so you have to wear special gloves and always wear shoes or anything that covers your feet. You always train your t telepathic quirk where you could block anyone else's thoughts out of your mind. So. You don't have to hear everyone's voice at the same time. You learn how to focus on one person so you can just hear their thoughts. You have also found that you do get injured, but it doesn't hurt or anything, and you heal fairly quickly. You also had talked to all for one face to face because you needed to tell him that if he went through with a plan that he had already that the heroes would find the base and destroy all the Nomu, save Bakugo, and that he would be defeated by All Might, but they didn't believe you, and you knew that he was going to go through with the plan, so you did everything in your power to change his mind, but he wouldn't listen to you, so you did something that you didn't know you could do. Your body moved and you touched his forehead, and you showed him all of your memories. You showed him your memories from when you were a baby, when you were growing up, when you were being bullied, abused, and then you showed him what was going to happen in the future. But while you were showing him your memories, you saw his memories. All the people he killed, his family, his brother was quirkless, but he did have a quirk. The ability to give a quirk to someone else through DNA, and it made one of all. You jumped back, holding your head in pain, trying to comprehend what you just saw. All for one also winces in pain. He looks at you as you stand up, knowing what's about to happen because he saw the future. I guess I'll change my plans then, and it seems you have another quirk, he says. Yeah, I guess. Looks that way. Well, I'm going now. Thank you, sir, you say, and walk to the end of the room. No. Thank you, Tundra. All of one says, Kuguri, open a portal, please. You say as the oh, that was the wrong voice. You say as a portal in front of you forms, and you walk through it, going back to the base. You're standing in the base now. Thanks, Kuguri. You say, walking past him and going to Toga's room. No problem. He says to you. You walk into Toga's room. You hear heavy breathing. You walk in more to see that she's in a dark corner of the room. You walk up to her to see that she's going pale and that her eyes are red, not yellow. You get closer and touch her shoulder. Hey, Toga, are you okay? You ask with a worry in your voice. She looks at you and says weakly, I, I need someone's blood. I need to taste it. You could see she's holding onto a knife. This might be an effect of her quirk. You think to yourself, do you want my blood? You say, and she looks at you, unsure of what to do. You take the knife away and lift up your sleeve, showing your arm, you, and you cut it, letting the blood drip down, her eyes widening. Come on, it doesn't hurt, and I'm going to heal quickly. You say, putting your arm closer to her face. Uh, are, you, are you sure? Toga says, holding her mouth. Yes, now come on, you say to her. She jumps on top of you, almost ripping your shirt, pulling it down and biting you hard, but you didn't feel the pain. You can just feel the pressure and tugging on your neck. You pick her up and put her on your lap. She wraps her legs around your waist. After a few minutes, she lets go and starts licking your neck. You feel better now? You say, patting her head. Yeah, yeah, 
thank you, she says, still licking off the remaining blood. No problem. Now, let's get to sleep. You say, picking her up and laying her on the bed. You also lay down next to her, and she cuddles to you, and you fall asleep immediately. Oh, sorry. I made, I might have taken too much blood, but it's okay. You look cute when you're sleeping, Toga says, also falling asleep. Okay, everyone, get up. We have a new plan to get through, Shigaraki says, yelling and banging on everyone's door. Huh? What? Um, Togo, come on, wake up. We have a meeting, he says sleepily, nudging her to wake up. Mm, five more minutes, she says, still asleep. Okay, fine, I'll get dressed, then I'll wake you up, you say, getting up out of bed and going to the closet to get your clothes and get in the shower. After you get out and get dressed, you go up to Toga. Hey, come on, sleepyhead, get up, you say, sitting on her bed. No, she says with her eyes closed. Okay, then looks like I'll have to get you dressed by myself, you say, whispering in her ear. She shoots right up, covering her ear and blushing hard. I I'm, I'm awake, she says, getting out of bed, then getting her clothes on in the shower. <laughs> she says, then gets her clothes and goes in the shower. You walk out of her room to see Dabby and the rest of the team in the bar. Hey, where's Toga? Dabby asks, looking towards you. Oh, she's in the shower. She'll be out soon, you say, walking up to the bar. After a while, Togo comes out of the room, and you go over the new plan. So, one week from, so, one week from now is the training camp, and this is the new plan. We kidnap Shoto Todoroki, but we're not going to do anything to him. He is just bait for the heroes to come and save him, so all for one can fight All Might one-on-one. -on -one. Shigaraki says, explaining the plan to you. Okay, you understand? He says, looking at you guys. Yes, sir, the league says. Off to training again, Shigaraki says. And all of the league leaves. You and the team train until one day Kuguri gets a message from Kaminari. And it's the location. Hey, master, I have the location of the training camp, Kuguri says. Good, now everyone suit up. It's time to go, Shigaraki says, and everyone gets ready. Everyone is ready, and you and the league walk through the portal, and you see that you're standing on a cliff overlooking the forest, and you can see the building where the two classes were staying, and you could see some of the students out in the forest. Let's wreak havoc, Dabby says. Whoa, let's get this party started, Twice says. Okay, you know what to do? Spread out, Shigaraki says, and everyone goes off in different directions. Your part was to freeze the whole forest within a four mile radius to confuse the students, and Dabi was to unfreeze it and cause a forest fire. You went with Mr. Compress to find Shoto to see that he was with Bakugo. Hey, Mr. Compress, over there, you say, whispering and pointing into the direction of Shoto and Bakugo. Yeah, I see them. Two, okay, go for it, he says. You make it snow direct at them because it's the middle of summer and it shouldn't be snowing. You could see that they look up at the snow with confused looks on their faces. You take this opportunity and shoot eyes at them, freezing them in place. And if they were left in your eyes for too long, they could get frostbite and hypothermia. Mr. Compressed, you say, looking at him, and he nods. You run off to go get Dabby. Hey, Dabby, I need you to unfreeze Bakugo before he dies or get permanent damage. You say to him. Okay, where is he? He says, annoyed. Over there, follow me. Oh, and Mr. Compress already got Shoto. You say, running off. Dabby follows right behind you. Yeah, can't wait to see my little brother. Dabby says, as you and Dabby get there, you see Bakugo struggling to break free. And you can also see that his fingertips are turning blue. Your eyes go wide. Come on, hurry up, he's going to freeze to death. You yell at Dabby and running faster. He runs as fast as he can as well. When you and him get there, he unfreezes Bakugo and makes sure that he doesn't have any permanent damage. You look at Mr. Compress. He's holding a little blue marble with Shoto inside. Shigaraki. Shigaraki, we got Shoto. Mission complete, you say, talking in the ear of talking in the earpiece. 
Nice work, I'll tell Kogudi to bring you all back to the base, he says on the other side of the earpiece. Okay, see you there. You see a portal open up in front of you. You, Dabby, and Mr. Compress walk through it, and you walk inside the base where the others are waiting for you. Mr. Compress put Shoto in a chair, tied him up, and put a quirk canceling bracelet on him. You and Mr. Compress left the room, and you went to Toga's room, where she was, and Mr. Compress went to his. Dabby was left to watch Shoto. <laughs> I mean, you know, that doesn't sound too bad if you know what I'm saying. Okay. A few hours has passed, and he had finally woken up. Okay, so this was chapter 3. We still have chapter 4, 5, 6, and 7. And 7 isn't that long, along with 6. So I might just read 5, 6, and 7 all together. So, yeah. Oh, you know what? Yeah, we'll just read 4, 5, 6, 7 together because they're not that long. So the next part will be the last part. Um, I hope you enjoyed. If you would like me to do, to finish this series with one last part, then like this video because it shows how much you guys, um, appreciate this type of content. <laughs> so, yeah. Bye, loves.